great spiritual teacher and leader who is alive in the present. Yes. God raised him from the dead and he is alive now. Our religious founders, regardless of their nobility, belong to the past. They have been dead for centuries. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one and only spiritual teacher and leader who shares his divine life now with his followers. Founders of religions who are dead cannot share life that they do not possess. He shares his life now. All religions of the world. He gives you the power of the concerned with the past. The divine Son of God is alive in the present. His new miracle life is available now. His miracle life is available How? now. How? By asking. By asking for it. You don't know unless you ask. Because they do. People don't know what they're doing. They kill each other in Mars. He said, forgive them. He didn't say that. The other man said that. He said, forgive them. Oh, <laughs> 
happen because God, you change your mind, you go this way. You know? I was in Shenzhen and I somebody stole my watch, my watch at one of the classes. I put it up here and the man took it. But we were talking about this. We were talking about conscience. Conscience, you know? And the next day he bring my watch back. Yeah, his conscience, you see. He, he he's the lost the lost coin come back, you know? So what's the meaning of this? Why was he eating? Why was he eating with the sinners and tax collectors? He gave two stories to try to explain. Well, there's one more story. There's one more story. Okay? That's a long story. I don't know if I can go through this. So it's a parable of the lost son. He continued. There was a man who had two sons. Father, I sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer wanted to be called your son. Make me like one of his hired men with the first, second, and third parable. It's all about something that is. No. It's all about the one word. What's the title of these three? What's the common word? The common word. The lost sheep. The lost coin. The lost son. So, why was he talking to the sinners and the tax collectors? Why was he spending time with them? Because they were lost. Spiritually. It's not healthy people who need a doctor. It's the sick people who need a doctor. He didn't come to call those who were healthy and wealthy and wise. He came to call those who were sick. You don't go to the doctor when you're healthy, usually. huh? Usually you go when you're sick. So why was he spending time with the... the, the, the yeah. Because they were sick, they were lost, they were the, they were the prostitutes and the, the low class people that nobody would wanted to talk to, you know. The other people, the other people were, oh, why is he talking to them? Why are you talking to them? You know, did they need a doctor? No, they were too proud, you know, they were too proud. They were too high and too high and mighty, you know. They were too high. They, they couldn't, they could not receive from him. You know? So he went to those who would receive him. He went to those who would open their heart. He went to those who were sick and broken. The, the ones that the, the society looked down on, you know? The government, the government in his time didn't appreciate him so much, you know? He didn't have to do that way, but that's the way he chose. So, I think you can understand the meaning of the parable. The parable of the lost coin is about what? How many coins did she have? Ten. How many did she lose? One. Wow. Did she look all over the place and hunt the nine coins? Yes, she did. No. no. She didn't look all over the place and hunt the nine coins. She looked all over the place and hunted the one lost one. The nine didn't need to be found. You know, they had their own life. They were comfortable. They had the big cars and the big houses. They were comfortable. They didn't need to know the Creator. They were, they, no, don't bother me, I'm busy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy, I can't talk to you. So where was he? He was talking to who? He was ministering to who? See? Who was he talking to? The lost coin. I had a girlfriend in Shenzhen, she told me. She became a Christian. Her life changed. She used to drink and do all these bad things. She became a Christian. She accepted Jesus. God changed her heart. She became a Christian. Then she always told me she was the lost coin. You know? Lost coin. That means means she was found. You know, many times you hear this word expression in America. She says, "I'm saved." 
What's the meaning saved? Saved from what? This is very common. Ask anybody in America, North America or other countries or Nigeria. Are you saved? They know the meaning. It means you're not going to hell because you've accepted the free gift. You've accepted the free gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. You can't do nothing to save yourself. You can stop smoking. That's not going to save you. Stop cheating. That's not going to save you. You're still not good enough. You can give all your money to the poor. That's not going to make you go to heaven. Only one thing can save you. That's when you believe on Him and let the power of the new life come into you. Experience a relationship. Christianity is not religion. It's a relationship with the Creator. I don't need do this and do that, drink and don't drink, smoke and... I don't need that because I'm His child. How I become His child? I accepted Him in my life. I believed in Him. I became His child by asking Him with my mouth. I said this, I said, Jesus, I ask you into my life. Change my life. You know? You know, won't let go of me. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to be uh, raped or something, you know? Right? How we meet the guy? The man who called up on the phone and said bad, nasty, sexual things to my friend. And my friend would just tell him, you know Jesus loves you? And the man would say, I want to... I, I can't tell you what he said. It's so dirty, you know? He was gay, okay? Homosexual, okay? He was so dirty! I will do this to you and do that. I want to do this. You know, my goodness, it's horrible. And kiss this and do that, you know, and the other thing. And it was horrible. It's up to this. It's up to that. You know, suck nothing to mine. You know, it was horrible. But we kept talking to him and sharing him the good news. And you know what? I thought he would never change. He didn't believe. He didn't want to. He was doing the pot, the drugs, and then the gay life. He was older than me and bigger. So after about a month, we took him to church. He went in the church, out of the church. Nothing. Nothing. Took him twice. Nothing. Uh, he seen miracles, people get healed, uh, nothing. Three weeks later, nothing. One month later, nothing. So I didn't see him no more. Two years go by, three years go by, four years go by, five years go by, ten years later, I go to a restaurant, a man behind me tapped me like this. It's him. He's working in a restaurant, okay, or he's working there. He says, you remember me? I said, yeah, I know you. I remember you, sure. You're the guy trying to... <laughs> he said, I... He said, he had a... he said, I have a wife, three beautiful children, and I go to the church up here now. You know, he's not gay now. You know, not gay. The guy has a good life. But, yeah. Got a question here, go ahead. I remember this street. My yes, strange parents, question. My parents, all my family members, live in Buddhism. Okay. If I believe in the Jesus, there will be two gods in my family. Uh, where the two gods fight each other? Uh, yeah. And if they fought together, who would win? <laughs> and if they fought, who would win? Uh, yeah. He says, all my family believe in, in Buddhism. Well, that's quite natural. You know, being in China, Buddhism is very common in this country. My, my, my girlfriend in Shenzhen, she was the leading Buddhist. The leading Buddhist, probably in China. She has a magazine, she has books, and, uh, and she hands out all the informational letters. I can never get her to read the Bible. She was afraid of it. I think because she knew. I went to her temple. I don't care, no problem with that. You know, I went to her temple. I, I can read her books. I have no problem with that. I know who Buddha was. Buddha was a, a man born on the earth like everybody else. He was born in the Himalaya mountains up on the south side. And he had a child and a rich wife. And he knew he didn't have the answer for life. And so he went, Buddha went looking. Sabaraga Havagata. You don't have to say his name. You know? And he was... He, you know, this is a long time ago. You must remember, this is 2,600 years ago. It's before Jesus came to the earth 2,000 years ago, you know. At that time, there was the Jewish prophets, you know, Yotai Ren, Hatsai prophets. Huh? 
Jewish prophets. There was King Solomon. You know King Solomon? That was, was 3,000 years ago. 300 years before Buddha. Okay? And all these all these prophets were talking about the future, about Jesus, who would come to the earth, who would redeem all mankind. Because just like Christmas coming this month, Jesus wasn't born like a regular man, you know? It wasn't Miriam who had sex with a man to get the baby, you know? He was born without sin. But all men in the world, including Mohammed, or whoever the religious man is, they're born as men. They are the creation. That's why Buddha quit everything. He looked for the truth. He asked his friends, what's the truth? What's the truth? He was very disappointed. He didn't know. He go many days without eating. He wants to know. But Jesus was not the creation. Jesus was the creator. The Bible says nothing was created without him creating it into being. It says, before the world was, he was eternal with the Father. Man, in every country of the world, and even the smallest little island, the smallest island, they worship something. You go there. If they have no Bible, no religion, they will worship something, the sun, the moon, the trees. Because inside, they have that instinct and that desire to do this. You know? And you see them. I've been to some of these small, small countries out in the water. And they worship very beautifully. You know? They sing these very pure worship songs just from, from nature. You know? Very beautifully. But just this one place had a statue and it said, To an unknown God. They didn't know who God was. But that's what Jesus came for. There's no confusion. There's not. There, it's impossible. You can have mushrooms to eat. You know mushrooms? Yeah. And one day I ate some very poison mushrooms. I ate poison mushrooms. I ate it. Mm. Hey, I told my daughter it's not bad. It's probably the most stupid thing I've ever done in my life. I, I ate the mushroom. I'm okay. I wait a few hours, ate some more. I didn't know, I didn't know mushrooms do not affect you until sometimes 24 hours later. Oh my goodness. I came so close to death. Really, I was so close to death. It was horrible. I thought I was dead for sure. I won't tell you everything that happened, but it was bad. Well, religion is the same way. There's many religions out there. And not all mushrooms are good to eat. And not all religions are good. You know? They're not all good. You know, I'm not against the Buddhist religion. Buddha had good desires, a good heart, good attitude. He was before Jesus. He didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't have the opportunity to say, Jesus taught about forgiveness, you know. And, and Buddha also taught other things too, you know, eating the animals and cutting the meat cutter is not good occupation, you know. If, if, if you cut meat, it's not a good occupation, you know. But Jesus doesn't judge people by the occupation. And he doesn't judge Buddha either, you know. So it's not a question of, of, of how many gods do the gods fight each other. There's either one creator or there's not a creator. There's only one creator in the world. And I think as we come closer and closer to the end of the days, as the Bible says, we're going to see this stronger and stronger. You know, we see many Muslims, we see many Muslims, like I, I can't show you here, that finally realize, in Muslim, you know, Muhammad, their leader, he had no miracles. The leader of the religion was a warrior, a fighter. If you've read the Quran, I've read the Quran. You know, the Quran is the Muslim Bible. And it's the second world's largest religion. People who pray to Muslim God is called Allah. You know? I asked him, I say, I asked a man here in Hong Kong, I said, I said, do you pray? Yeah, he says, yeah, I'm Muslim. I pray all the time. Five times a day I pray. I say, well, does God ever talk to you? He goes, huh? I said, does, does God ever answer your prayer? Does God talk to you? Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. Then why do you pray? I, he said, it's religion. And that's exactly right. It's religion. Because man, man, and, and you can ask any Muslim this. It's the same around the world. I've lived in four Muslim countries. It's the same. It's only a religion. You must do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and wear the clothes, and do this, and wear this, and wear the white socks underneath, and this, and don't drink the beer. If you're Muslim, you can't do that, you know? 
It's only religion. It's only laws. Why does man need this? Because he does this to satisfy his conscience. He thinks it's right, you know. When I lived in Israel, you know, Israel, they have 3,000 laws. On the Sabbath day, you can't, all the lights are off in the house. You can't wash clothes. You can't cook. Everything has to be cooked the day before. Sounds silly, doesn't it? You can't do, and they, they, they still have problems. They're still sinners, you know? You can't actually have the chance to find out if God is true and real. And I've seen many people find out. And I've seen ladies, I've seen them get healed right here in China. A lady in Shenzhen, her brother was sick in the hospital. I told you the story before, remember? Paralyzed from the neck down, couldn't move. And she asked me to pray with her. So we prayed with her, and three weeks later she came to me crying, saying, I can't believe it, the doctors say my brother's up walking around now, and they can't believe it. They said they can't believe he's walking now. And you know, because God can do things, you know. If you believe, and if you will have faith in people, if they want to become Christian, it's very easy. It's like this. Just, I ask you, I ask you, Jesus, 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 come into my life. Come into my life. Show me this new life. Show me this new life. Give me the power. Give me the power. The, power. The, the feeling. The feeling. The sense. Let me know. Let me know.